Hi again, and we continue talking about the uh, yurt, its origin, its design, and etc. And in this uh, video, we will be talking particularly about yurt types and differences, and obviously that usually means Mongol ger and Turkic uh, so-called yurt. So, what are these differences? and why uh, are specialists um, uh, finding di dif differentiate between these types between gear and yurt uh, there is a good very good um, reason for that and we i will try to explain uh, more about it, this in the video in this video but first let me please uh, uh, have one of those uh, academic runs uh, th that I'm always uh, throwing because uh, I, I don't particularly uh, I don't particularly uh, find myself comfortable with the with this terminology with the particularly with the term yurt and I will explain why <coughs> in this slide. So uh, we all know that Mongol yurt is called ger, which uh, apparently in Mongol language means house. Now I don't speak any Mongol whatsoever, so this is information from internet. However, I speak uh, Kazakh and some I, I I am familiar with other Turkic languages. So uh, the word yurt is very much familiar to me. Uh, and this is where the problem is because uh, in Turkic language what we refer to as yurt and this is why I keep telling the so-called yurt is called y or, or, or some other variations of this word y uh, and that also means house uh, in, in, in Turkic languages for example, there are variations of this uh, name, such as Ak i, Kiz i, Kazakh i, Boz i, Kara i, and etc. And they all mean uh, different types of i, which is uh, what we refer to as yurt, and which is unfortunate. Now, the yurt. The word yurt itself, or as we say in Kazakh, jurt, jurt, uh, that's actually a wrong term because it literally means place where you put the yurt, a, a location for the yurt, not the yurt itself. It could also mean village full of yurts, but the yurt itself is y. Uh, and even if we, uh, there is it, there is even more uh, more meanings to this word in metaphoric uh, terms it means uh, the word yurt or jurt means nation and country and people and homeland so uh, as a native turkic language speaker as a kazakh speaker when people say Yurt, uh, it never makes sense to me because I hear it very differently. For me, it's not a foreign word. For me, this is an actual term that means something else than than yurt. And every time it kind of <laughs> drives me crazy when I hear this. This is why I'm recording this academic rant. Uh, I think it's it's representing uh, one of those. Um, Eurocentric erroneous uh, terminologies that are very very common especially when ta talking about some exotic uh, cultures such as nomadic culture there are many of those and I, I rant about them all of the time uh, but just to quickly illustrate what it feels uh, from my perspective for example imagine if uh, you are a native English speaker and you know what car is 
as as I'm showing on this slide. So car is a vehicle with four wheels and an engine and seats and etc. Now imagine people of other nations for some reason start referring to your uh, car by different terms, by different words. For example, uh, they might start calling a car, you know, village or or parking spot or country or nation or homeland and you know they're they're they're, show, they're showing they're pointing at a car but they might say things like oh i just bought myself a new village pointing at a car or my new parking lot has a good mileage again pointing at, at a car uh, I'm going to write my country across the country, <laughs> pointing at a car. I'm going back. I, I'm going to ask a wallet, wallet to uh, park my nation, <laughs> and I'll pick you up with my homeland for dinner. So this is how uh, weird it sounds to me when uh, everybody is referring to e as a yurt. But again, uh, this is a tradition. I'm not trying to break any trends. I just want to put it out there that the word, uh, that the term yurt is not correct one. So if you want to use a proper term for, for, for yurt type, please use word e. Uh, now, I suppose uh, the Mongol word ger, ger is okay. I never heard any Mongol complaining about it. I could be wrong, but speaking for all Turkic speaking uh, nations on earth, uh, yurt is not a right, is not a correct term for e. <laughs> so once I, now since I have this out of my system, let's get back to um, the topic of this video, which is differences and types. So uh, Mongol ger uh, has lower profile. Uh, it has straight dome poles, just very straight. Uh, the sky like uh, the skylight uh, shape uh, looks like wheel, or or uh, like the uh, nautical driving wheel, steering wheel. Uh, the door is usually single leaf door in a massive frame. The uh, wall lattice structures are straight. And one of the main uh, differences is that the skylight wheel is supported with poles because uh, they would not, uh, uh, the, the skylight wouldn't be able to support on its own. It needs these two poles to support it. Now the Kazakh E or, or Turkic E, uh, the so-called yurt, uh, how is it different? It has higher profile. The dome poles are curved. They have this uh, curved piece at the end of it. I remember my American friends, uh, my American friends immediately started adopted uh, hockey sticks. So yeah, it has this hockey stick, stick shape, the Turkic yurt. Uh, the skylight shape is different. It has these uh, crossing pieces like this in the middle of it. Uh, the door is usually double leafed, opens like this, as opposed to just one leaf door. The uh, wall sections, the, the, the wall lattices, they have this curved shape, not just straight cylinder. It has this uh, profile curvature. And most import importantly, the skylight piece uh, is not supported by, by the poles. It's just uh, sitting there on the top of it, thanks to the hockey sticks, uh, hockey stick shape of the poles of the of the of the roof poles so those are major differences uh, if you want now uh, speaking uh, speaking about 
differences and advantages <coughs> of these two designs. In a comparative analysis, the GER uh, is a very good design. It's very simple. It's much simpler. Uh, it's much easier to make and produce and, and, and transport and raise and take down. Uh, so in that respect, it's, it's very practical. The only, uh, the only con that I personally find is that these uh, skylight supporting poles get in the way, basically. And of course, uh, one might say they're just in the middle and usually they put a, a fireplace over there so they don't really get in the way. But for me, for example, uh, who grew up seeing Kazakh yurts, uh, uh, Turkic yurts, uh, it kind of represents some sort of, uh, up, uh, some sort of, you know, uh, obstacle right in the middle of the of the of the dwelling. So comparing to that uh, Kazakh e or or the so-called yurt. Uh, it has following pros. It, it has more advanced design thanks to these uh, hockey sticks and that allowed to get rid of the of the uh, skylight supporting poles. Uh, it has a higher dome profile, so it's roomier, spacier, and uh, more volume, more volume too. Uh, the only con is that because of the curved uh, hockey sticks and curved wall structures, it is harder to make and, and maybe a little bit harder to race, but not, not significantly. So there you go. Uh, in a nutshell, Mongol gear, easier to make, easier to race and transport but not as comfortable to live in. Uh, Turkic yurt or E uh, is a little bit more trouble to make and transport, but provides for much better accommodations. And let's face it, we spend, as nomads, we would spend more time uh, on our encampments and sitting in, in inside of the yurts as uh, uh, as opposed to traveling and transporting them. So it's it's a trade-in, it's a compromise. If you want simplicity in making and transporting and handling, then you go with the Mongol yurt design. But if you want more comfort and more space, then you go with Turkic E design. Uh, they... Turkic E or, or so-called yurts have quite a few subtypes. So uh, if you want to go even deeper than that, if, if you just uh, you learn to um, tell the difference between Mongol Ger and Turkic E, but if you want to go even deeper, uh, there are various types of uh, E or Turkic E, for example, we already talked about uh, Kazakh E, and I, I usually talk about Kazakh E because uh, it's uh, it's a more familiar design to me. Uh, it I I know it the best. This is the design I've been dealing with the most, and also you know as a native Kazakh, it's logical for me to be uh, using this as an example and I will be talking more about this design but basically uh, uh, other uh, Turkic U types are very similar but they have some uh, certain uh, certain uh, differences for example we have the Boz E which is Kyrgyz Kyrgyz E, Kyrgyz Yurt, and uh, this is probably the, the closest design to Kazakh E, uh, 
except for it's probably a little bit um, higher. The profile is just a little bit higher. And the theory behind it is that uh, the Kyrgyz, they're very similar to Kazakhs in every single way, but uh, they lived in mountainous regions uh, where they had more protection against winds. So higher profile wasn't such a big problem because they could always hide in, in, the, in the valleys, behind the mountains, and etc. While Kazakh yurts uh, have slightly lower profile because Kazakhs among uh, the nomads are, are the most, are predominantly plains nomads, steppe nomads. So they needed these uh, uh, lower profile for it to withstand open winds and etc. Otherwise, uh, uh, apart from that, Kazakh and Kyrgyz E are pretty much 90% similar. Now there are also some interesting type of yurts that I found uh, in my research. One of them is called Firuj, Firuj, Firuj E uh, in northern Afghanistan. Now, uh, usually when we say Afghanistan, people immediately think of Pushtuns and other uh, uh, non-Turkic peoples. But we have to remember that northern Afghanistan is predominantly Turkic region where we have Uzbeks and Kyrgyz and Kazakhs. So I would consider this year type still a uh, part of Turkic family, especially since the last uh, part of the name, the Firj E, again suggests that this is E or, or Yurt. Um, what is it? Uh, what, what are the uh, different specific char characteristics of this design? Is that the the poles, the, the, the roof poles have two bends. So in other words, it's like, it starts like a hockey stick, stick, but then on the longer side, it has another long, shallow curve. And the skylight piece is very high. It has this uh, strongly bent uh, cross pieces. So it gives this very high profile, almost it's even higher than semi-spherical. So that's uh, another type of design. The third one uh, is Hanai Khrga, uh, Hanai Khrga, uh, which is uh, another one from Afghanistan, but uh, this time it's used by Hazara people. Now, Hazara people are very interesting. Uh, I've been kind of uh, trying to place them on the map uh, for, for a long time. And it's kind of hard because a lot of people refer to them as Mongol speaking peoples, but others argue that they're Turkic speaking peoples. So we don't know that for sure. One thing for sure is that they're the very extreme far offshot of the Eurasian nomads uh, that, that are found themselves uh, deep in the middle of the Afghanistan, surrounded by uh, different cultures. But they kept this uh, yurt type, the Hanai Khra. Uh, and again, it's clearly it's a it's a Turkic type of yurt, but it has this very interesting uh, skylight shape where uh, the the cross pieces the cross poles are kind of oh tied together and create another uh, sphere sitting on top of it i don't even know how to uh, describe it perfectly but if you look at the picture uh, you can see what i mean so uh, that's another one, and another one that I want to cover is the Kara Kara E from uh, Karakal Pakistan uh, from uh, another Turkic peoples 
Karakalpaks, also very close to Kazakhs and Kyrgyz. Uh, we used to live together, uh, have shared history, shared culture, and their, their E is very similar to ours. Uh, the only difference that I found is the shape of the skylight. It's, it's very interesting, it's very unique. It has two rings as opposed to one ring. It has 16 pieces, uh, the cross pole pieces, and it has nine, uh, 12 little pieces that hold these two rings together. And <clears throat> the, the cross pieces are not straight. They also uh, bent uh, both horizontally and vertically. So they create this distinctive shape, this distinctive uh, uh, silhouette, if you will. So uh, this is uh, five, just five types of the Turkic E that we covered, Kazakh, uh, Kazakh E, or Keys E as we call it, Boz E, Firuz E, Hanay Khrga, and Kara E. Uh, I didn't include many other types here, such as Turkmen e, uh, uh, Bashkir e, Nogai e, uh, and others, because uh, it's harder to find information on them. Maybe I will add some more information as I gather it. There are also uh, e's in, in Anatoly in, in Turkey, uh, probably some in uh, in Iran and Iraq, where the, the, the Turkomans live, maybe even some in Africa. I'm talking about the Turkic E type. But again, uh, already you can see how many different types uh, there exist. And if we look on the map, we see the kind of uh, the distribution of them. Uh, we can see that in in Mongol in Mongolia area uh, and and uh, parts of Russia where the Mongol speaking peoples live, we have uh, Ger type, and talking and I'm talking about Mongols, Buryats, and Oirats mainly. Now, if we move a little bit westwards and southwards, we will see the Kazakh Kiz E the Kyrgyz Bozi, the Karakalpak uh, Kara'i, the northern uh, Afghanistan Turkic Firuz'i, the Hazara Hanay Khrga, and other types of E. Now, another very interesting type of yurt uh, that I want to talk about is a hybrid type of yurt uh, that, ha that has uh, features of both Turkic and Mongol yurt. And here I'm talking about the Kalmyk Ger. Uh, Kalmyks are very interesting peoples uh, in terms of history. They were originally uh, part of the Mongol uh, family uh, lang in terms of language and culture and origins. But then, uh, due to various historical events, they ended up uh, all the way from Mongolia to Volga River in, in Russia, in modern-day Russia. And they found themselves, themselves completely surrounded by Turkic-speaking nomads, completely isolated from their uh, original Mongol language, uh, Mongol culture cradle, so they got surrounded, they got themselves surrounded by Nogai, Kazakhs, and uh, Bashkirs, and Tatars also. Uh, Crimean Tatars, and etc. So uh, for a few centuries, they lived surrounded by all these different Turkic peoples, and uh, they got very strongly influenced uh, by the material and, and non-material culture of these peoples. A lot of uh, Turkic language, Turkism, 
words in in Kalmyk language, a lot of um, items of in terms of weaponry, armor, and clothing, and etc. And at the same time, they kept uh, very much their uh, origin, mother culture, uh, the Mongol culture, even the name. It's, it's still they still call their 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 yurt ger. But if we look at the in terms of uh, construction, in, in, in terms of structure, their yurts are hybrid. Uh, for example, it looks like they have uh, from the Mongol gear, they kept the, the wall lattices, the straight poles. Uh, but that's about it. The, the door piece is now... Uh, double leaf like in Turkic yurts and most importantly they adopted the skylight piece from the Turkic design so uh, out of uh, out of four parts that come uh, into making a yurt I'm talking about wall lattice uh, dome poles or roof poles skylight and door uh, these four pieces Two of them are Mongol and two of them are Turkic. And uh, the very uh, interesting engineering challenge that they managed to solve was that if in traditional Mongol gear you remove the poles that support the skylight, it will collapse under its weight or under the weight of, of, of felt and snow because it's just too low profile. Uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the Turkic yurt, in Turkic yurt, they solved this problem by introducing the hockey stick bent at the end. So now the dome becomes self-carrying and there is no need for, the, for these uh, columns or supports. Uh, but in... Kalmyk yurt, they managed to uh, combine these two principles. In other words, the roof poles are still straight, but at the same time, there are no supporting poles on the inside, which is amazing because uh, this is the idea uh, behind the, these poles in the Mongol yurt gear. So how did they manage to do that? Uh, when you insert the, the, the ends, the higher ends, the top ends of the roof poles, roof forming poles in the skylight, there are special holes designed for it. Now, in the Kalmyk yurt, they must be uh, entering these holes under steeper angle so that uh, the dome profile is relatively high. And that prevents, because the weight distributes now more evenly, it prevents uh, it from collapsing, even though the poles are straight and there are no columns supporting it. So this is an ingenious uh, compromise engineering uh, uh, solution for this challenge. Neither Mongol, neither Turkic. Uh, and it's, I think it's very, very interesting. So this is another type of yurt. Or gear, and on this diagram I show uh, how it works in terms of uh, uh, sp uh, interior space. As you can see, Mongol gear is shallow, uh, not high. You kind of uh, almost touch ceiling with your head if you're if you're tall, and then you get these uh, obstructing poles in the middle. That's on the left, and on the right, uh, the Kazakh E. Uh, that has very spacious roof even with the same footprint it's much higher it's much much more roomier but it has these complicated um, hard to make hockey stick poles and in the middle the Kalmyk gear the, the the hybrid type that uh, has still higher roof uh, higher profile more space than a mongol yurt a little bit less than a kazakh e but still has the best of both worlds uh, 
easier to make transport and handle frame design, but at the same time almost as roomy as a Turkic E. So that's very interesting. So um, this video was this uh, very short brief review of various types. Uh, of course we can talk much more about it and uh, I apologize for uh, all those uh, nomadic brotherly peoples of whose uh, uh, gear or, or E-type I didn't talk in this video. But maybe uh, as information, as I get more information, I will be adding to this playlist. But already, uh, I hope everybody can see that the world of yurt uh, types and designs is very vast. And this is it for this one. Uh, we will talk more about yurts and ease in the following sections. So please stay with me and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.